Hi, this particular video is for chapter two, and it is a demonstration problem for how to compute conditional percentages by row and by column and overall percentages in StatCrunch so that we can then determine whether the two paired variables, categorical variables in the problem show association dependence or not. And uh, so let me proceed with a question from the exam. I'm gonna open uh, this window. As you can see, it's from exam one. And in this window, we have a data set where you have a contingency table where the rows represent different kinds of campus constituents at a university, constituencies. And the columns represent uh, how likely the consumer is to buy something at the uh, uh, student union bookstore. And uh, this particular table is something you can open in StatCrunch or you can open in Excel or copy to a clipboard. We're gonna open it in StatCrunch here. And I'm gonna review uh, this particular, uh, in this particular case, I'm gonna review what we did in the earlier video, which is how to use StatCrunch uh, in order to compute all kinds of different percentages from the contingency counts that are uh, provided in uh, the statistical contingency counts that are provided in this so-called summary form that describes uh, the likelihood of buying by columns and the constituents by row. So the first thing I'll do is move to that screen in my stat lab and enable it so that we can see it all. The second thing I have to do is ensure that all the totals are deleted. So I click and drag the mouse through the cells that I want gone, and I want the total cells gone. In addition to that, In addition to that, I also need the labels to occupy the column labels where it says var. So I'm gonna move the remaining summary table where I only have what are called contingency counts, the interior counts of the table. And I'm gonna control or command X, move up one row and control V until the table is set up so that the labels are occupying the var column where the variable name should go. And uh, I'm gonna change the name of R1 to constituents so that I have the different market segments of people who shop at this store. Once I have all the labels in the right place, and once I have taken out all the subtotals by row, by column, and overall, then I proceed by doing stat, tables, contingency with summary. I select the columns that have counts and only those that have counts. And the row labels, I select the constituents. And then in this case, I'm going to pick row, column, and percent of total, the three varieties of percentages that you, we use uh, contingency table counts for. And when we hit compute, we basically get a table with all the possible answers, uh, including those on the margins, those totals on the margins. Okay. And uh, whatever those totals are, they represent, each percentage represents a different description of a different single or pair of categorizations of these 1,419 customers. Um, then it's just a matter of picking the correct percentage for answering the question. So currently I'm gonna go back to test and I'm gonna see, read the first question. First question is what percent of all the respondents are alumni? As I mentioned in the earlier video, the most important thing you do when you read a question about a percentage computation is identifying the verb in the question. Once the verb is identified, the object is after the verb in the question structure, 
and the benchmark is before. And so we're looking at the alumni out of all the respondents. So going back to my table, if I look for the alumni out of all the respondents, the answer is this 4.51%. And so 4.51% will be the answer that I record in the test, 4.51%. Notice how the instructions tell me that I should now round to one decimal place. So I'm gonna go back into the blue box and only leave the 4.5%. The next calculation again is find the verb. What comes after is the object, what comes before is the benchmark. So I'm looking at everybody who's likely to buy out of everybody in the table of responses. And so as I go back to my stat lab, I'm going to go to the very likely to buy. And out of the whole group that would be a 32.7 percent so it's that simple to then go back and uh, record the answer verifying part c what percent of the respondents who are very likely to buy the calendar are alumni so now I'm looking at the alumni, but I'm not looking at the alumni out of all the people in the data. I'm looking at the alumni only in the column of the very likely to buy. So I'm looking at a column percent. So I have to be very careful when I read the questions to identify the verb. What comes after is the object. What comes before is the benchmark. And that's how I distinguish between a row percent, a column percent, and an overall percent from these contingency tables with percentages. So again, because I am looking for the column of very likely to buy, and I'm specifically interested in the object of alumni within that column, I'm gonna go back and pull the alumni out of the very likely to buy column, and that is 4.5% again. So I'm gonna go back to the test and write 4.5% there. And then of the alumni implies that the benchmark is now looking at the, at the row of alumni. And the percentage who are very likely to buy was, is then gonna be the number 32.8. So instead of it, the answer being a column percent, it is a row percent because it's out of the alumni who are the very likely to buy. So it's 32.8% of all the alumni, whereas 4.5% of all the very likely to buy are alumni. So the object and the benchmark were effectively transposed in questions C and D. And that is to test your ability to detect a column, a row, or a percent of total. Then when you are asked for a marginal distribution of campus constituents, what you should be looking for is percentages on the margin. So I'm going to look at the 63.9, the 23.3, the 4.5, and the 8.3. And those four numbers are going to be the ones that occupy the marginal row percentages. The marginal column percentages are also provided on the bottom of each column. And the interior percentages under the three columns of individual various responses are called conditional as opposed to marginal percentages. So I hope this video was useful at computing conditional and marginal percentages. I've created a particular document that comes with this video in which I treat the question at hand and I color code the objects and the benchmarks, respectively in blue, sorry, in yellow highlight for the object and in blue highlight for the benchmark, and in green highlights for the distinctions between marginal and conditional distributions. And I also introduce a small explanation of what it means for 
dependence to be present in these uh, contingency tables between the rows and the columns, between the two categorical variables in the question. I hope that this particular Word document is helpful in developing your understanding of how dependence is evident whenever the percentages across different columns or different rows vary by row or by column, vary by the opposite directional of data. So if you see conditional percentages and these conditional percentages vary from one column to another when it's column percentages or from one row to another when it's row percentages, then we say that the percentages are indicating a dependence and association between the two categories. If you see equal percentages, then we say there is no dependence. We say there is independence between the two categories. Thank you for uh, paying attention. Thank you for watching the video. I hope the video was helpful. Uh, you are welcome to let me know in the modules section uh, by writing a comment as to whether this video was helpful. If you have any questions, uh, you may also send me a message or visit me in Zoom Comfer or write a message under this module, under the discussion aspect of the module, write questions that I am then able to reply to and uh, respond to, to clarify anything that this video left unclear. Thank you very much for your time.